the last video, we took a look at how to organize our page using sections and articles. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to organize the hierarchy of our page using headlines and H groups. In HTML4, we had the heading tags, which were H1 through H6, and these are used to denote the hierarchy of the content on your page. An H1 describes the highest level on your page, and the H2 tags denote the next level down, and so on. However, there seemed to be a problem with the semantic meaning versus its common usage. Now, most people use the H1 tag for the name of their site, and we'll take a look at our example here for how that works. So here, our blog name right here is the H1 tag, and they'll often use an H2 for a tagline. Now, this makes sense from one perspective, because the tagline is an important headline, like the name of the site, but it's less important than the name, so H2 makes sense. On the other hand, does the tagline describe the rest of the text that immediately comes after it? If you generated a table of content for the headlines, would it make sense for the tagline to be a level 2 headline? Probably not. HTML5 introduces the H group element. Now, when headlines are placed inside of an H group, the lowest number headline, or rather the most important headline, is considered in the page's hierarchy. So, for instance, if you wanted to have a section heading and a subheading, you can use an H2 and an H3. But since the H3 isn't a true heading describing the information below it, you could wrap the H2 and the H3 in an H group tag, and the meaning would be preserved. So let's take a look at an example. Here in our header, we have our H1 with our blog name and our H2 with a clever tagline. Now, like we said, the H2 doesn't really describe all the information below it, the H1 does. So, what we can do is we can wrap this in an H group tag. And now, only our H1 will be considered as a real title in the headline. We can use sort of both ideas of the semantic meaning of our headers. Now, we'll know that everything below this H group is represented by the H1 of blog name, but H2 is some secondary information, but wouldn't necessarily be considered in the table of contents on the page. Now we have this in a couple of other places, like right here in this headline for our blog post, we have our title in an H2 and our byline in an H3. Again, we could wrap this in an H group. And it would make more sense. Now the H3 isn't describing the rest of the page, but the H2 is. Now again, there's no real styling that goes along with this, but it adds semantic meaning. So for instance, if you wanted to write a piece of JavaScript or other piece of code that parses the source code of the page to create a table of contents, you can now have a meaningful way of telling it that the title of most recent post describes the information coming after it, not necessarily the byline, but the byline is still important information. Now right now there aren't a lot of applications that fully utilize the semantic meaning of H groups, but it is a good idea to start using them to denote heading and subheading relationships. This is something that will make screen readers a lot more effective, as well as assist other automated tools that may need to understand your page's content hierarchy. Another element that has been added to HTML5 to increase the semantic meaning is the figure element, and its associated fig caption element. In print media, it's common to see images, charts, tables, or block of text that represent a singular piece of information and is referenced by the surrounding document. These are referred to as figures, and almost all of them contain some sort of caption. Now, the figure tag allows you to group illustrative pieces of content and semantically link them to captions using the fig caption tag. So we have an example of this in our page right here. We have a we have a little piece of code right here that contains an image, as well as a span caption. And it's good to group this together, but right now it's only grouped together visually, but there's no actual tag that defines the relationship. So what we can do here is replace this div with a class figure with just a figure tag. Now everything inside of our figure tag is considered to be the figure, and now we can add a fig caption inside of this. So we'll add a fig caption. And now this caption describes everything else in this figure tag. Now there's no default styling for this either in most browsers, but a good default style would be to, you know, maybe put a small border around it 
and give the caption some sort of styling to denote that it's describing the image around it. Now figures aren't limited to just having a single image in them. You could have a series of images if the images relate to one another, perhaps in a sequence or multiple pictures of one type of figure, as well as you could have blocks of text, a table of information, as well as you know things drawn on the canvas or other custom elements. If you're considering using a figure tag, think about if the content inside the figure tag, including its caption, would make sense outside of the context of your page, in which case you should use the figure tag. So here if we pulled this figure out and we had just our image and our caption, it would actually make sense because the caption would tell you what the image is about. You don't necessarily need the context of the rest of the page to understand it. Now we've written our HTML4 page using HTML5 tags, but there are still some compatibility issues with Internet Explorer. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how to resolve these problems so we can use our HTML5 tags in every browser. Mm -hmm.